Hi, so this is Matt again, and we're going to run through the first of the demos, which is around server load balancing, uh, visibility and control of DNS services. Okay, so just to go over the demo environment again, we have a big IP uh, that's getting traffic from legitimate and malicious users, uh, and then the back end we have a uh, master DNS infrastructure that we'll load balance towards, um, and um, we'll have a Splunk uh, collector as well in this case. We're deploying uh, the configuration via a template, via an IAP. Um, <clears throat> we're generating traffic with JMeter and we're viewing records and, and, and logs in terms of stuff directly on the F5 and then also by tailing uh, the log file on the device. Okay. Uh, what we're going to look at in this, this demo is we're going to build an, uh, a service with an IAP uh, that's going to include uh, application health checking and a server load balancing, um, even if it is just a one pool member. Um, and then we're going to have a look at external logging uh, and we'll have a look at analytics. And then based on those analytics, we'll, we'll see how we could uh, block a malicious user. Okay, so here's the demo. So look, I'm using 11.5.1 the moment on this on this big IP um, and in the network map here you can see that really nothing much is deployed okay so not much is there uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use one of these templates uh, I've just modified the standard F5 uh, DNS template that ships with the box to include some of the other features that we'll, we'll address but uh, this is included in the standard template this this first piece which is um, that's the listener that I'm going to define. Then what I do is I define the pool members that I want it to load balance through to. Um, if I want have more pool members, I just add them. Uh, in my lab, I've actually only got one. So I'm load balancing through to a single pool member and I've set how many connections that I um, that I will support on that pool member. Um, zero means infinite. Um, <coughs> Right now, the application health monitoring, I've said I'm going to use an A record, so it's synthetic traffic. I'm going to send that um, fully qualified domain name, and I'm expecting to get that A record back as a response. If that happens, then it's healthy. Um, and that now, below here is the things that I've added to the template. So the first, we're going to collect uh, analytics locally, so I've enabled that. Um, I'm also going to look at both requests and responses, I'm going to send them to a syslog server, Splunk in this particular case. Um, it's going to be there, um, and um, right, that's all I need to define up there. Um, and then, since this is test traffic, I'll generate a couple of virtual servers. Um, so these are more lit, these are virtual servers that'll just snap to known bad IP addresses, dot one five two um, and dot one dot five one will generate random numbers, random IP addresses. So now what I've got is I've got um, this one here, which uh, is going to be from my IP address. This one, which will be from known bad IP addresses, and this one, which is from random IP addresses. Let's go ahead and build that. So now that the IAP's built all the components, uh, the really cool thing about this is you'll see here that I can store everything under a container. If I was to remove that um, DNSSEC demo, everything, all the components that have built would be removed. Um, what I've got here is this is my syslog stuff that's being sent to my uh, Splunk server. Um, then I've got a TCP virtual server uh, with a pool, a bunch of profiles, um, and then I've got a UDP virtual server. Now under the hood, just to um, just to help things along here, I've also um, I've also generated a uh, a Splunk GUI, um, and you'll see that uh, that's that's on this address one five nine. That's so we can we can view the records that I've been sending to Splunk. Okay, so when we now have a look at the, the network map, we'll see that we've got a few things set up. We've got our DNS services, we've got our, um, our randomizers, both the, both the bad reputation and the random, um, and then we've got a Splunk GUI set up as well. If I just click on the Splunk GUI, uh, you'll see that here it is here, the 159, and there's nothing in there at the moment. Okay, so let's just generate some requests. Now just using JMeter, um, and I send it to a random, from a random source IP address, what I'm going to send is A records. 
um, and according to JMeter here is I'm going to send 10 of them. So let's send 10 and see what arrives in Splunk. Okay, so there we go. Um, right, now what we've got is we've got 20 records have arrived. Uh, the reason there's 20 is because you see we get both the query and we get the response. So, so 2 times two times 10 is 20. Now, um, when we look at this, we, we, we see from the, the query, we get that we were requesting an A record. We see who that was from, which was a random IP address that I've just generated. Um, and then we see that's who we're sending this response to. Um, we can see that it's an A record. That's the A record that we're going to send back. And we also see we send a timeout as well. So we send a bunch of information through. Okay, now let's have a quick look at the um, analytics. Now the analytics take a little bit of time to, to get through. Um, they can take up to 10 minutes. So what I'm looking at here is analytics from um, a period of time over the last, well, over the last day now. So let's just zoom in on that, that period. Uh, we'll see that there's quite a few requests have been sent, so 218,000 requests. Okay, that's that's great. What I what I can what I can do here is I can view them by query type, and I can see here that mm, there's quite a few any records have been sent. So I might drill into that because that is a slightly unusual query type. So I can view it by that, and then I can go. Um, let's see the client IP addresses that have been using that one. Now what I'll see is that everyone aggregated together is, is quite a lot, with the exception of this particular IP address, um, which is causing me a lot of trouble. So if I had a problem with that IP address, I could, I could shun it. Now, um, that just happens to be the IP address of, of this device. Okay? So that is when I send to the, um, when I send to the uh, dot, uh, 158, it comes from this, this particular uh, machine. Okay, so if we go back into here, and another really cool thing about these IAPs is this re-entry capability. So I can come back into this IAP, I can reconfigure it, and down the bottom here, you see I can shun an IP address, and I can shun this IP address, I can block that for 100 seconds, um, and I can finish that. Okay. So now when I um, jump into here and send some requests to 158, um, from 158, what we'll see is that uh, this address was manually added to the list um, and it means that uh, the further requests that I've, uh, I've sent on have all been dropped. So that's, uh, that gets us to the end of that, that demo. Uh, what, what you'll see we've done is we've built a basic IAP. Uh, we've built that with, uh, with some application health checking. We've got a server load balancer uh, capability there, even though I did it into a single pool member. Uh, we've looked at the logging through to Splunk, we've looked at the analytics, and then we've looked at how you can use those analytics to manually perform functions. Thank you for